Um, hello, so uh, I'm Floris. Um, I've been, uh, been a by the test contributor for a couple of years now. Um, and uh, recently, we, um, PyTest did um, split off its um, plugin system that it's been using, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, um, how uh, how that plugin system works, how you write plugins with that, etc. Um, so, PyTest itself is a um, is a testing tool that hopefully all of you know and hopefully use as well. Uh, it's a yeah, it's been around for a long time, and it has a is actually um, it has a lot of plugins itself. Um, I think there is over 150 plugins. Um, that's very unscientific. That's just a number I um, uh, quoted from someone else. But yeah, there's a lot of plugins, and they they've been around for a long time. Uh, and and it, it its plugin system se seemed to work quite well. So recently, it's been split off because uh, it was it's interesting to try and. It, it was nice to be able to use that in uh, other projects as well, that plugin system. Uh, and that's being uh, called Pluggy. Uh, it's on GitHub, actually, um, under Holger Krekel's uh, username. Um, it's the repository. It's a, so it's a standalone version of PyTest plugin system. It's a, a little bit different than what it was originally was, but it's, it's very similar. Like It's just, just a couple of details and PyTest-specific things that have been moved out of it. Uh, one no note of caution, though, is it's still uh, not version. Uh, we haven't been releasing it as version 1.0 yet, and it's using semantic versioning. So, in theory, you could break the API at any point. But as I said, the API is basically taken from by the test. So, it's yeah. Hopefully, that shouldn't change too much. Uh, a little overview of basically what uh, I'll go through the talk is basically I'll kind of with a simple example. Um, Introduce how how pl how plugins work in in this sort of uh, world. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what advantages that brings, and then uh, towards the end of the talk, I'll, I'll talk about this, this this basically designing your entire application uh, at, at, at consisting out of plugins, which is uh, what PyTest itself does as well, actually. Um, and I think it's a it's an interesting way of um, looking at an application. So. I mean, you probably all know what a, what a plugin system is and why, why you want plugins in your application. So uh, basically, it allows you. It's it's like it gives you certain entry points in, in your um, certain points in your application where where, where you just uh, allow other code that you don't know um, to, to to execute um, with, with some extra information, etc. And the benefit is that um, people can extend it to do things that you uh, never thought of being useful or basically make it send email or something because everything sends email in the end. Um, the pl pluggy approach to, to it is, is one of hook functions. There's uh, several ways to, to writing plugins, I guess. Uh, and the, the idea is basically that you find uh, your, your extension point as a, as a hook that, that the application then calls. And at the point you want to extend your application, you call that hook with some arguments. And any of the plugins that, that have been loaded are free to implement that hook, and um, they, they, they all get called. Um, so it's a one to n um, kind of uh, call, call mapping. Uh, Plugin does support one to one as well, I, I, in a way. I won't really uh, go into too much detail about that. Uh, um, it, it supports that sort of um, uh, functionality as well. Um, so yeah, I'll um, start with basically a very simple um, example of, of uh, writing this. Uh, for for this is basically just the application that I'm going to use to demonstrate it. It's very simple. Just gets a gets a URL and prints it to stand it out. I'm using requests uh, a little bit uh, funny here. I'm breaking it out so like this is basically request.get, but it's spread out like over four steps. Is sort of the slightly lower level API you can use in there, um, and that's because it will allow me to extend extend the application. So this is very straightforward; it doesn't do very much. And I'm going to basically the first extension point I'm going to create is basically allow the plugins to modify the headers that I send in the request. So in this case, that means that um, after a request that prepares being called, um, that object has head headers as a dictionary of headers, and I'm going to allow the the um, uh, pl plugins to, to modify that dictionary before actually sending off the request. To do that, 
uh, in Plugin, you kind of need, um, you define your, your, um, your hook points, your extension points with hook specifications. And generally, uh, kind of conventionally, um, uh, we use like hook, hook test, hook spec.py to, to, to write this in. So it's a simple module. Um, and all you need to do is basically you, you have to create this, um, this mark for, for your application first. So the, the hook spec um, that you can then use as a decorator, the at hook spec decorator there. And you, you just name you, all, all that you really care about or all that Plugin really cares about here is the signature that you define because that, that is actually important. So, so the, name of, the name of your hook and the arguments it takes uh, are important. And because this is your API, it's a good idea to write a nice doc string about it and explain what it does. Uh, the sort of the, the, um, uh, the name itself, again, by convention, uh, prefix it with like your application name or something. That is not strictly necessary, but that's fine. Uh, and the last thing is like, there's absolutely no code about this. This is purely about the signature, that's all, um, the function signature. So having defined the hook specification, uh, let, let's just skip ahead and, and, and write our plug, um, you know, look at how the, what the plugin implementation is. And that is right, really um, very straightforward. So, so this is a different module again, plugin pi in this case, um, I'm using for the example. Uh, and generally, so, so again, for, to, imp, to, to write in a hook implementation, uh, it's, it's sort of what it's called, um, you, you, need to, you need this decorator to decorate your implementation with. So that plugin can, when it loads your plugin, it, it can scan through, through your plugin and, and find your, your, your hook implementations using that decorator. Gen generally, the application exposes that, so as, as an API to, to the plugin writers. So I'm importing the application itself, uh, curl in this case. Uh, and the rest of the implementation is really simple. So it's, the argument is just a dictionary. Um, and I, I modify it. But do notice that the um, implementation that I used, it only, only uses this, the one um, headers argument. So if you go back to the uh, uh, hook specification we wrote, it actually takes a, a, another a session ar argument as well. The pl plugin doesn't force you, uh, it plugin basically allows the hooks to only um, take accept the arguments that they need, and Plugy will look at the signature of, of, of your hook implementation, and from that will figure out basically which um, ar arguments you need. And that is that is kind of a, a, a good feature when your um, when your hooks evolve and, and and you're extending them. So because that gives you easier backwards compatibility. To actually look at what you need to do to change the application, um, this is. Still fairly similar. I mean, there's a couple of more imports. The first thing we do, we, we do new here is the um, hook marker um, to create that de decorator. That was just the public API that we decided to use. Um, and then actually, the, the main application is like so. The first four lines are, are concerned about creating this plugin manager. So it creates a plugin manager. Again, you give it a name, and then. Um, it's imported, so, so I imported the hook, hook specification here. Um, and the hook specification is, 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 is just a module object um, in this case. So, so you, you register all the hooks and using that decorator in, in the hook specification, Plugin will uh, scan for the hooks and f find them, etc. Uh, in this case, I'm using just simple import lib to, to uh, load, load, load dynamically load my plugin. It's kind of hard coded here, but you know. Um, and then you just need to register the plugin. The, the, um, the following is, is basically the same. So it's like the early request stuff. So create a session, create a request, etc. Um, and then actually calling the hook. So I got the plugin manager object, and the plugin manager object has this um, hook attribute, which is a hook relay. And after, after you've um, after you've um, added hook specification for for each hook that you have defined. It will create a, a, a callable in there, which allows you to call your hooks. And that, this is where, where you're actually calling the hooks from from in the plugins. So, um, in in this case, the the thing to notice also is that when you're calling the hooks, you have to provide obviously all the arguments because you don't know what plugin, which arguments your plugin are using, and you have to specify specify them um, or get, give them as keyword arguments as well, because. Um, Pl pl Plugin looks at, at, at the names of, of your arguments 
to, to know which, which arguments that your hook implementations need. So, so they need to be passed in as uh, keyword arguments. If you forget an argument or get it wrong, unfortunately, as I discovered while writing these slides, uh, it's, you don't get a terribly useful error message at the moment. Um, but, you know, hopefully that can be improved. Um, and the rest of the application especially is, yeah, very, very just the same. So that is all, that is essentially ev all, everything that you need to do to, to um, create plugins and start using plugins. The, um, yeah, w one more thing basically because um, the hook that I wrote um, didn't actually return any value. So you, you can have multiple plugins all implementing this hook and they would all have had the same dictionary, um, they would all have had um, the dictionary um, passed into them and they would all be modifying the same dictionary. But when your hooks want to return a value, that's also possible. Uh, and basically it returns a, a list of, um, a list of all the return va values of each hook and then your application has to decide what it's going to do with the hook. As a, as a quick example for this, um, I'm going to add a, a, another uh, hook specification. This one is sort of um, not much special. I mean, it's not not the best example. I couldn't really think of anything much better. Um, but basically, the the, the, the idea of this this, this ex extra hook is basically um, it will return true or false boolean whether the plugin thinks that you should make a request. So a plugin can deny a request or something. So hook specification service is pretty straightforward. Uh, the plugin, it's a uh, plugin as well. Again, really straightforward to implement. I don't really care. I just don't want to filter anything. So yes, I just return true. Um, uh, I, in, in fact, I didn't even have to uh, ex uh, take the arguments in 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 this implementation because I'm not using it. I could have skipped that as well. So, and this is actually the application. So it's getting a bit big, but not not much has changed really. So everything up till until the um, first hook is being called, the, the prepare headers hook being called is exactly the same. And all I'm doing afterwards is basically, I just, and, and this is exactly the same, so basically call, call, call the hook, call, call the new hook, it returns a list. Um, I use built-in um, all, all plugin here, uh, all uh, function to um, in, in Python to, to just um, see if any, any of the hooks doesn't like it. And that's it, I just um, then just do send the response, send request, print response, all that stuff. So that's um, uh, using return values. So that was sort of, you know, the very short introduction to how, how to write um, plugins. There's a lot more features actually, um, but essentially your application defines your, uh, certain uh, hook points that, uh, are, and the thing that matters there is that they are function signatures, so the function signature matters. The um, implementations of plugins, the arg arguments are optional, so if you don't need arguments, you, can, you don't have to use them. And you get the, uh, uh, basically one, one, so one call in the application will result in lots of um, calls in, in the plugins. You can return values as a list. There's a bunch of more advanced features that I haven't really gone into. Um, it's just like the entry points, uh, set up to an entry points integration, so you don't have to write that all from scratch if you want to use setup tools. Um, you can also uh, influence the hook ordering a little bit, so, so sometimes that, that might matter, so you might want the hook to be run, a uh, plugin might care that it's hooks are being run early or late or something like that. Um, hook wrapping is something similar, it's just there. Your plugin actually um, gets called uh, before all the other hooks get called, and then you uh, get, um, gets the result back as well. So, so it gets to run code, at, at the beginning and at the end of, of, of all the other plugins in a way. And doing that gives you access to, allows your plugin to actually see the results that the other plugins have produced and you could even modify them or return something else or something like that if you, if you want to. Um, and the last kind of interesting uh, feature that you can use is uh, basically plugins, um, writing plugins for your plugin if you want. So because plugins can actually uh, if you if you just pass the plugin manager object to your plugin, there there is nothing stopping from from the plugin from adding new hook specifications to the plugin manager, which then can be called from um, other plugins, etc. Um, so it's a it's a yeah it's a slightly unique uh, 
way, way of, of writing plugins, I think, in uh, the Python world, compared to having static classes and um, your function signatures be, being strict. Um, it allows you to, uh, so it, it allows you more flexibility, so because it doesn't force you, um, it's just a function, you can implement this module as we just did. You can implement your plugin as a, as a class as well. Uh, and and the, the feature where, where basically the hook implementation doesn't have to request or doesn't have to use all the arguments, it also allows your hooks to evolve a lot uh, um, easier because you, you can change the API by adding new arguments and all plugins will keep working. And that seems to have worked quite well by the test, really. The other thing is that so yeah, it doesn't, uh, that because there, there's no, um, there's no class or anything in, involved. It doesn't force any behavior or workflow or um, state that you have to keep or anything like that. Um, if you if you want to, so plugins can keep state, so they can implement themselves as, as a class as well. So, so you can keep state, but it but it also leaves if you have a very simple plugin, it is very simple. It doesn't force anything extra on you. Um, next, uh, I'll talk a bit about. How you can how, how you can actually use that to to design your entire application out of plugin. This is a little bit anyway. It's an interesting way of thinking about things. So basically, as we just saw, like creating setting up your, your plugin manager, etc., is, is very small. So all you need to have is a very small bootstrap um, module that will Im Im import so, some core built-in uh, plugins, and th those plugins can then be responsible for running your entire application. And they can, in fact, be responsible for actually do, doing more setup work. So, so they can then, so, so you can just use a couple of hard-coded plugins, and then those plugins will, will be responsible for looking at setup tools and endpoints and loading more plugins, or using namespace packages, or a kind of whatever kind of uh, mechanism you want, you'd like to use for that. Uh, it's uh, it's. This sort of approach has been used, and um, PyTest has been pioneering that, um, as far as I know. And um, that's sort of for command line tools, uh, short tools. Um, I've also used it for long-running daemons as well. So it kind of it's, it scales very well for different types of applications, basically. And the interesting part of that was obviously that you know your entire application exists out of your um, plugin, as uh, using your plugin API. So your plugin it kind of ensures that you make a useful plugin API makes for very flexible and extendable applications as well. So, yeah, basically, if I keep modifying my my, um, my little toy application here to, to start and do that is, um, is what I'll be doing in the next few slides. So in here, basically, I'm replacing the ma main function here. I'm um, taking uh, argv, kind of a more classical argv um, argument in this case. And in this case, all, all it's doing is basically, so the same, creating plugin manager. But as you can see, I've actually um, created a list of core plugins, and I've just implemented this core plugin because it's, I, can, I can hard code a small set of plugins. So I just imp import that already, and in, um, when registering the hook, I just iterate over my core plugins, which is just one, and uh, register. Them. And w once once that is done, I can just ca call this, you know, a, a new hook that I've specified, um, badly and that's the end of the application in a way. So that there, sh there should be only be one plugin really that implements that hook. Um, although other plugins could implement it to override it, um, but it's sort of slightly more advanced. And then just use that return value to exit the application. That's all the, um, the rest of it. So, like showing actual, so, so this is the, the, the new plugin I wrote. Uh, so core.py in this case, Im implementing this sort of um, workflow. So this is actually now the, the one that drives the, this curl main um, hook is, is the one that drives the, the rest of the application. You'll notice I've done a little bit more here than strictly necessary. So this is sort of a, when, when, when writing your, your entire application this, this way around, kind of um, inside out, uh, as I sometimes think, think of it, it it's, it's sort of a useful. So you'll notice, like, I create uh, after creating the plugin manager, I create this uh, configuration object, and then later on, I create like a session object. It's nice. It's a nice abstraction, and it actually works um, quite quite well. So 
gen generally I make the configuration object and make that responsible for doing things like uh, passing the command line, reading config files, etc. And that kind of provides some application states, which is essentially your, your static configuration. Um, you sort of, and then the session, um, because of request session that we were using earlier, I had to call it um, CLI session. Um, but um, that session object is, is uh, allows you to kind of keep runtime state about your application if you if you have any, and it's kind of a nice pattern. And one, once you're doing once you're doing those two, um, as you can see, like I call the hooks like configure and session start, and then session finish and configure. I'm not actually going to use those hooks in this example because it's quite short. Um, but it, it, it's a nice pattern, and it allows uh, your plugins to hook in on those points and, and do extra static configuration or maybe enrich your static configuration, um, things like that. The, um, so so af after that's sort of done, so, so in here you can see I've actually um, moved the argument parsing into the config object. I just pass in my argv. Um, and ba basically everything, uh, in this case, the rest, the, the core of the application, I decided to actually implement in just uh, one hook. I could have split that out more, but it just makes the code to look at a bit more. So, so this one uh, curl make request hook will be responsible for executing the code that we saw earlier. Um, so, because it didn't all fit on the same slide, this is still the same module. Um, so, just showing basically the, the, that config object. So, I'm not doing anything clever at the moment. I just still know that I just passed in my URL. Um, but, yeah, basically creating a little bit of state. In the CLI session one, um, it seemed like a reasonable idea to put uh, the request session in there. Uh, if, if, if my application grew, grew some features where, where I would um, request multiple URLs or something, they could share this, the session, the HTTP session for, for that. Um, so they all get their cookies, etc. cetera. Um, and, and then actually the, the, the so the other um, new, new hook I, I, I created was this, um, this make request hook. And the implementation there is basically very similar to what we saw before. So it just, um, yeah, it's exactly the same as before. So it's just um, the, the only difference here is basically that now the URL is taken from the config object, and the um, session is now um, the HTTP session is now taken from the CLI session object. That's kind of the only differences. Um, one thing, like that, I think is a, is, a, is a nice example in in this way of of writing your application is sort of the handling of configuration in, in, a, in a bit more detail because um, it's it basically it, you, you can you, even even like creating your argument path to generate minus minus help you, you can ha let plugins interact to that and it's nice because you can um, in, in this case I, I'm, I'm in this case I'm implementing a plugin that's basically responsible for making this request and the URL argument on the command line I'm actually making a concern of the plugin that actually wants to use this. So you can, so so it, it's a nice way of, of kind of separating concerns. Um, there, there's no need to have one central argument parsing thing that needs to know about what everyone wants to do. Uh, and this is, yeah, again, pretty straightforward to implement. So all, all I'm doing here is like this config object that I already had, and that's. Um, I was already responsible for parsing the argument lines. Um, I'm actually doing it properly this time around and creating my pass parser. Um, and the thing, I, the, 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 the small trick basically t to, to get your arguments pa passed by plugins is just define another um, hook basically. Before, before you pass your arguments, you pa pass the parser around to all the plugins that, that want to add, add any arguments. In here, I've just, in the same plugin, directly implemented that hook as well, adding my URL argument in here. Um, and yeah, that, that's it, basically. The, the, the make request changes a little bit here. Um, again, not really anything significant, just because the, the, um, the URL is now in a slightly different location on my config object. But everything else is kind of very straightforward, very similar. Um, and this is sort of... Um, yeah, this, um, this is a way, um, so this way of, as, as I was saying, the 
by the test itself uses this sort of pattern as well. Uh, and this is a very simplified, uh, I would say, uh, look of the hooks that PyTest defines and how, how it calls them. But it's it's interesting to, to uh, it doesn't cover everything because the slide was too short, uh, and also because it's very complicated. Um, or well, reasonably complicated. Um, but you can you can spot the same pattern. So it starts with creating its own version of plugin manager. But uh, anyway, and then it creates this this config object. Um, that helps in, in parsing of the command lines is the next few things. So um, you've got the PyTest add option, which um, add, add, adds the option, then command line parsing is implemented as a hook as well. And then it basically sp spawns off um, this command line main one. Uh, and that hook, that is then going to be the hook that drives the rest of the application. Um, you see, and, and in there, you basically see the same pattern as I was saying earlier. So you create the session, um, then you give all the plugins uh, a, a chance to kind of hook it, hook into those configuration and uh, session setups. So um, with the PyTest configure, Python session start, and then uh, finish, and then configure at the end as well. And then the actual main, um, the, the main work that PyTest do, does is then uh, split up in these two two main steps, which is like collection of all the tests and then running of all the tests, and then inside those that uh, is again. Um, passes of the work to, to, to even more and more hooks. And there is more hooks than are actually shown as well. So it's all, um, but it, it shows that, you know, in large applications, you can, if you think about how you structure your, all your hooks, et cetera, it's an, it's an interesting way of thinking about designing applications and it works quite nicely in, in some situations. Um, so to kind of summarize a little bit, um, yeah, so, so um, it's, a, it's an interesting plugin system. Uh, it, it allows you to evolve your, your plugin API quite nicely, uh, and it, it, it gives very, um, it forces very little on, on, on your plugin writer, so you can keep simple things simple. Uh, but, it, uh, but likewise, you know, if you do need store, store state and all that sort of thing, you can do this as well. Uh, despite the fact that I've actually shown, um, like writing your whole application as a plugin, there is no obligation at all to do this, like the first example. Um, I start from a static existing application. It, it's very low overhead. Like all you need to do is create a plugin manager. So it's actually not that hard to have. A, if you have an existing application that you want to grow a plugin system, there's no need to, to go. You know, this whole everything needs to be a plugin design. You can just go very gentle, traditional kind of adding a few hooks, and there's not much overhead there. Um, but it is. I, I do find it an interesting way. If you're starting from scratch, it might be interesting to consider. It's kind of a fun way to to try and design your application, and it works quite well in the right situations. Um, so, yeah, that was um, what I would like was um, wanted to say about uh, Pluggy. And yeah, any questions? Thank you for the great talk. I also find this uh, approach very interesting. Um, but uh, when I think about it, uh, usually I would do that with objects. One object overloads another, and that way extends the, the, mm, the, the, the functionality. And this is much more dynamic in a way. And it gives me the feeling that you can really plug them in at, at a certain time. But I was a bit missing that. How how do you now configure your application together from plugins? Is that is that now intended in this design or not? That that the user, impl um, well, when the user has the application, uh, he can have a, a variable set of plugins, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, but how is that configured? How does he activate or deactivate plugins? How uh, is that configured? Yeah, so that's kind of where I was hand wavingly referring to. You have set up tools integration or something like that. So it kind of leaves it uh, fairly open to, to the application itself. Uh, typical things are, are you know, it's, I mean, set up to entry points. One is basically, uh, you, if you got uh, any, uh, what's the, uh, not by uh, any distribution. Is, is the right word apparently. Uh, so if you've got any distribution installed that has an entry point, then they'll be registered. And it's up to your application can can you know decide. Oh, I, 
you, you can your application can modify this if, if that doesn't give you enough control you can do command line switches you can use configuration file um, so it, it kind of leaves it up to the application to select which plugins are, are used but usually you'll have a set of core plugins kind of that you will provide the basic functionality anyway There's a new functionality in the newest pi versions of Python, which is called uh, functools.singledispatch. It's a generic function mechanism. It can be quite useful for some types of plugin functionality when you want to dispatch based on some type. So is there a way to integrate that with uh, Plugy or a best practice to do that, or do you just use them side by side? Um, so so sing, uh, generic single dispatch is yeah. that the one you're talking uh, I haven't really used that much myself so that's where you uh, where it uh, decides uh, mm. where it looks at the type of the first argument and then decides yeah, which and you uh, can uh, register new implementations on the fly uh, um, I'm not really sure how to answer the question uh, I haven't really thought about uh, how, how that interacts um, at, at the end of the day I, think, I don't Pluggy, Pluggy doesn't really do anything like that, but if, I mean, you, you just get your arguments uh, in the implementation, so you, your implementation can just say, oh, I don't care if it's this type, I don't care, and, and just return none, and then okay. it doesn't influence anything, I guess. Hi, so if you have uh, multiple plugins, it's up to the application to take the results of a uh, hook call from each different plugin and then somehow integrate them. Um, so can you talk a bit about how, like, so that's then something that the application author needs to think about, I suppose, uh, if two different plugins want to, for example, modify the headers. And also, like, if, you have, uh, if you're passing dictionaries to your hooks, then they're kind of, uh, the order really matters, right? Because they could be modified in place. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, so, so the order relevant it, it can be relevant sometimes, um, as, as you say, and, and that's where pl pl Pluggy has, um, so, so you can, when you're implementing your, your hook, you can say, uh, so the decorator, um, just so if I didn't go into this, but the decorator takes, uh, you can, you can basically call it like a function and then give it keyword arguments uh, so then and there you can basically you can influence the ordering a little bit so you can say I, w I want to be called you know at, at the beginning I want to be called at the end um, so obviously modifying yeah when you're modifying an object uh, you don't you don't get a very strict um, or ordering guarantee uh, the, the wrapping method um, was, was another one basically um, where, where you will be called at the beginning and at the end um, um, and the other part of the question was, um, were you? Well, I guess if you're the application author, you need yeah. to think about how, what kind of yeah. plugins people might write, I guess. And yeah, the where, where you return, if, if if multiple plugins return a value, you get the list with them. Um, yeah, you, um, your application. I mean, there there is also uh, one of the things that you can do on on the hook specification was that. Um, I refer to you can do one to one um, uh, calls as well. Um, basically, in hook specification, you, you can say something like, if if this list of return values is, is not very useful, or, or like basically, I skipped over this detail in, in when I was showing the the um, the inside out architecture in a way where where the main uh, function. So if multiple plugins were to implement main, it would be kind of some something funny would be happening. Uh, so. so um, but the, the the way the way to solve that is by by when you're spe specifying that hook, you say I wanna I wanna create a one to one one call really, which you do by adding the um, first result I think keyword to it, or use first result or something like that, um, and and then uh, if if you're at, at that point you you again you get plugin ordering going as well. So at that point if your your plugin could go. Um, Actually, I, I want to be called before the normal main main one, for example, and um, and that, and then basically look at, you know, do, do do I want to 
then it can decide, do I want to return a value and, and actually become main, or do I just return none? And if I return none, then the next hook will, will get a chance to be main. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of, you can do that sort of thing. Thanks, just another one about um, return values. Is there any way to map what return value has come from which plugin? Um, strictly speaking, not really, unless you happen to know the order of the plugins. So the plugins are actually, so, uh, so if, if you tightly control the order, so when, when you sort of plugin manager, I was calling dot register the plugin object, uh, that order is actually respected. So if you, if you know exactly the order that things are, are, are registered in there, and if you know that all your plugins implement the hook, because mostly only the plugins that implement the hook will have a return value, uh, then you can sort of, but yeah, not easily, no. Because if you're <laughs> dropping none as well, then you're gonna. Yeah. yeah. Is there anything to consider when testing plugins? Sorry, say that again? Uh, if you want to test a plugin, is there anything special you have to do to test it? Or? Um, I, not really, because they're, um, the way the decorators work on, on, the, on your hooks um, makes it quite nice because it doesn't actually affect the, the function at all. Uh, it, just marks, it, it just marks up the function, uh, um, which means it's still the same function object as you see. So in your test, you can just go and call it directly, and it, it actually kind of makes testing easier in some way, I guess. Sorry, so the question is plugins can be disabled from the outside? Uh, so the question is can you disable uh, pl pl plugins? Uh, you can essentially, so you, you got in your, your plugin manager where you do register, you can also do unregister, and that's how you disable a plugin. So if at any point you can you can iterate over, you can see what, what plugins have been registered in the plugin manager. So uh, if you then want to go, you can iterate over it and look like, oh, I don't want that, I want to be loaded. And you can go and unregister it and, uh, yeah. I have a little concern. In the benefits slide, you mentioned that uh, you can basically pass any argument you want, but uh, that's more or less the behavior you would expect from JavaScript and from Python because this could uh, lead to some nasty bugs. So you can't pass any argument you want. Uh, it has to be, so, so when you, um, uh, uh, go back to, uh, where's the specification? So, so in the hook specification, when, when you actually, um, th those are the arguments that you, that, um, it has to be implemented, and you can't call it with anything else if you, if you don't. Um, the only thing that you can do is, is um, on, on the next slide in the implementation, um, is you, you can leave out one, and that that is basically just implemented as a signature inspection. Um, so it is, uh, it's maybe a little bit unconventional, unconventional in Python, but this is what Python allows you to do. I mean, it provides you all these runtime inspection things. Uh, it's if you if you're used to PyDot tests and its fixtures, it will seem very natural to you as well. Uh, yeah, it, it's okay. That's a little bit odd at first, but it's not really. It doesn't really violate anything terrible. I think it's yeah. It doesn't allow you to pass in non existing things either. It's still quite strict on that. It's for the recording and for the audience to be nicer. Um, one thing is I'm um, thinking about because plugins uh, normally um, they should shouldn't be part of your application and normally on plugins you have on a pl on application start you do something on a, on application exit you s do something else and if if everything is a plugin how you manage what application is starting? Because there is like no application if there is if everything is pluggable. You know what I mean? Because if you can not disable a plugin, it's not the plugin. So I'm s a bit having a problem understanding um, the plugin approach. <laughs> right. Uh, 
This is, yeah, you, I mean, a plugin could completely screw up your application if you really want to. Uh, but that's, you know, you're coding in Python, you know, um, you can screw up everything anyway if you really want to. Uh, I, I, you know, yeah, what's the term, consenting gentleman or something like that, or uh, it's, yeah, uh, in, in practice, I think it's not really an issue, no, none, yeah. Uh, you know, as you said, it's, it's been in use for a long time in pilot tests, and yeah, you could, you could completely uh, replace the main loop and go and do something else. But at the end, of, yeah, at the end of the day, it doesn't help anyone either if you do that. <laughs> All right, uh, we're out of time, but uh, thank you, Floris.